Welcome to How to Make a Hearth and a Top Rock for a Bow Drill Fire by The Survival Garage. Here's what we're trying to make today. If you uh, see in the picture here, we've got on the top, we've got just a regular branch um, using a, a suitable piece of wood. And I'll be talking about a suitable piece of wood in another video. Um, a hearth in the, sec in the center that's had one fire made from it and a spindle on the bottom. What we're going to be making is, in the first part of this video, is just the hearth. It's a fairly simple piece but it's got some delicate portions that are very important um, when making a fire. Here is a uh, sort of a more of a pre-manufactured one. This is actually on the top, uh, one by six, uh, made of pine. On the bottom, I've ripped that down to a one by four. Um, that's actually cedar on the bottom, and I've gotten spindles out of that. Um, and you can see the how to make a spindle video on some of my other videos. Just rip off about an inch, inch and a half portion in order to make a square out of that spindle and then um, make your spindle out of that and what you have left over works perfectly as a hearth. Um, I would advise heavily when you make uh, your first couple of bow drill fires to definitely you be using some kiln dried pre-manufactured stuff. Get some success doing that and then move over to getting your own materials out of the woods and, and making fire out of that. What I like to do is I like to take a non-straight piece of wood. This is absolutely not necessary and you don't see it on other videos which is absolutely fine. But what I find is I like to make my spindle and hearth, and sometimes, in some cases, top bearing, out of the same branch. I take one branch, and um, I take a straight piece, and I, I, I make my spindle, maybe even my top rock. Um, but I like to use a, a bent portion because I know that I can't you make a spindle out of that. So it's only worthwhile as a hearth. So I like to make them out of bent portions just so I know I'm saving and maximizing my materials. The first thing that you're going to need to do is to uh, split this piece of wood. Now I like to split it two, two times um, and, I, and I use a batoning method for this. I, I mentioned batoning in some other videos and I, I can show you how to do it here. On the right hand side of the picture you're, you're seeing a piece of oak that I've simply took, taken the bark off of. You put your knife in this position there and make sure it's a fairly stout knife. Um, this is a Bark River Aurora that's got a fairly thick spine. It can handle uh, being batoned. Put your, your knife in this position here and then you're going to want to take that piece of oak and, and tap the top of it fairly hard. Um, the harder the wood is that you're going into, the harder, of course, you're going to have to hit. The more stout that knife and knife uh, edge is going to have to be. But it should go right into the wood and have no problem splitting that wood out. Again, the harder the wood is, the harder it is to get into, but the, the quicker it wants to split out for you. This is a medium hard wood um, that I'm using, and it, as you can see on the top portion of this, and I'll zoom in, has been split once. This is me splitting it again with, uh, with the baton. And once I get done splitting it, I'm going to take my time and, and clean that up. Um, what you're looking for here in these two, first two um, cuts with the baton and the cleaning it up is two flat sides. What you want is a flat surface to work with on the top that you can um, then put a dimple in, and I'll be showing you down the road, and, and, and uh, use your spindle. And you want it flat on the bottom so that it sits on the ground because you're going to be putting your foot on this hearth. So you want it flat on both sides. That's, that's kind of first and foremost in, in, in the making of a, of, a, of a good hearth. And what that's going to look like is, is, is a lot like this here. Once you've got a good flat portion and you're ready to work, you're going to want to use your knife tip to, to make an indentation for um, what will you'll be using your spindle on. In order to do this well, you need a good knife that has a, a, a nice spear point. Not all knives work really well. Um, like this Bark River Aurora that I've got has a nice spear point and that will work just fine. A uh, Swiss Army knife works okay, but it, it's a little bit more of a clip point and, and, uh, and it, 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 it will, will not make as, as nice of, of an indentation. Almost anything will work. A sharp rock will work, but if you start with, with good materials and the, and the right knife, and the right tools, you'll always end up with something that's a little bit better. What that's going to look like when you get done is something like this. You've got a good indentation being marked by the tip of the, of the blade there, and it's absolutely ready for to accept your spindle. One other thing that I like to do that I'm showing you here in this picture is to clean up the front of the hearth. I try to make the, the front of the hearth as well square. Now, one more point that I, that I didn't bring up before. Make sure you're leaving ample space around this indentation so that you don't weaken the wood around it when you start drilling into it with the, with the, uh, the spindle. So I leave a full um, spindle's width on the right hand side there. You can see there's plenty of wood on the right. And I leave about three quarters of a spindle width on the front and the back. 
make sure, and a good rule of thumb is a full spindle to, in the front and a full spindle width in the back. You'll never, or on the sides, you're never going to then break it out. Because what happens when you start cutting this notch that you're going to see coming up is you can really weaken the material. And when you start really drilling on it around, you you'll, you might use that spindle, might break out the piece of wood and you've, and you've lost all of your labor that you've done thus far. It's frustrating. Especially when you when you've started to get tired from doing the from doing the drilling portion, it does take some energy to 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 uh, put out to make these fires, and you, you want to save that for, for getting a good coal and getting a good fire. You know, one shot might be all you get um, in a survival situation. With that done, and, and you can see here, this is what we're trying to shoot for. We're trying to shoot for getting the spindle to mate in this first process, which is called burning in. Um, it's trying to mate with the hearth. You want maximum friction at the base, at this point, the working end of the spindle. And if you watch the spindle video, you'll see that I mentioned time and time again, you want minimum friction at the top end of the spindle, which is uh, more of a sharp point. You want minimum friction up there in the, in the top rock. You don't want a lot of friction in your handhold. Not only does it get it hot and, can it, and actually burn your hand, it happened to me a couple times with a uh, bone uh, top rock, but you'll lose all that speed and friction in your handhold. You want as much speed and friction and heat generated at the working end, which is right where I'm showing you here. After you've learned some pretty good form, and that's in another video as well, I wanted to just break these up, you do what's called burning in, which is essentially you start to move in a bow drill fire. Now, a couple of things. One, this is good coal-making material as we see it right here. This black... Um, dust and it's a little bit um, striated it's a, it's a, it looks a little bit in uh, long portions maybe I had a little bit too much pressure but it's very good in black dust you can see how burnt the spindle is you can see how burnt the um, the bowl the, 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 that is generated uh, and created now look as you look at the spindle the spindle perfectly mates in a very short process it probably only took me 15 seconds the spindle perfectly mates with the hearth that's what you want maximum friction if you start to get your handhold mating with your spindle at the top end, you want to sharpen up that uh, top end again and minimize that friction. Now, one thing that I like to do, I'm not sure how necessary it is, but I, one thing I like to do is I like to make sure that the spindle is not drilling. I want it causing friction. I want it doing a small bit of shaving. And let me zoom in here. See how that's shaving off on that spindle there? That's what you want, little pieces of wood that, that shave off create a pile of that dust or shavings, very fine shavings, and then you generate so much heat at that point that those shavings combust. Now, another sidebar, you need about 700 degrees of heat. So you want to create in your first 10, 15, 20 strokes a bunch of dust in the notch that I'm going to show you how to make here in a second, in the notch of the bow drill. Then you want to ease up on that pressure and go for speed. You want to generate a ton of friction based speed at that working point and combust or get to the, the dust that you've created. Now if you see here, and I'm going to point an arrow towards it, if you see here the, the kind of the tip or kind of a nipple on the end of the uh, spindle, you're going to want, I, what I do, and I don't know how necessary it is, I like to shave that off just a little bit. Use my knife point and take off just a little bit of that there and, and then I'll show you what I'm talking about. Take a little bit of that off. I don't want that to be so sharp that it drills. I want it to be more of a bowl shaped. I want it to be more of a kind of a shield shape or a buckler shape. So it's creating all that friction without drilling into the, and then of course the danger would be drilling through your hearth without creating a good fire.